Yeah. This is how I taught for 12 All seconds. Right. On the fly. The show on the road. <laughs> Get on board. Yeah, the train is a coming. Number 24 on the white working group. on the altar for Easter Sunday. Tomorrow we have to hand it in. Um, 
If you would like to and you don't have the money with you today, don't worry about that. Just fill out one of the forms, give it to us, you know, at the end of church, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll catch up with you on the cost of your flowers. But it, at this point, it's really going to look pretty up there with all the flowers. And what we'll do is there'll be an insert in the bulletin saying, you know, flowers in memory of and for each individual plant so everyone, you know, can pray for the loved ones. And, and they don't have to be deceased. You can put flowers for anybody. And also, we've got chicken and biscuits coming up next week. So, what, carrots next Sunday, Betty Lou? No, it's Easter. When are you going to do carrots, ladies? Well, me. Monday. Carrots will be Monday. Um, we will have them here Sunday, Betty Lou, so whatever you guys want to do. Okay. okay. I'll pick them up Sunday from over here. Okay. Again, we can always use help. Trevor and I will be here all day for you on Wednesday because he's out from school. He's on vacation that oh, week. That's right. Great. Right. Right. So that will be helpful. He'll be here with you. So we do have a few things happening before next week. So we have a good a Good Friday service here at three. This come this Friday, and then uh, we do have Easter Sunday coming on next Sunday, right? So. Uh, my plan was to do what we did last year, because nobody has any objections, and if you all want to do breakfast at, at 7, I mean, there's sunrise service right here at 7. We go into breakfast out here, and then regular service after that. Does that, that work for people, or what do you, what do you think? Well, I'll speak to one. <laughs> Anybody have any objections? Do you want to do the breakfast? Please say speak? yes or no, because I don't want to be here cooking for no one. <laughs> but I also don't want to not be here and have someone show well, up and have their stomach growl through church. Well, we also occasionally have people come from outside, and we're going right. to surely invite them. So it's a good opportunity. I think it worked well last year that we did the breakfast. Uh, everybody enjoyed it. We what didn't time? have a whole lot of food left over. What time is the breakfast? Right after the service. Yeah, we, we have our sunrise service right here. If it's nice outside, we'll open the door. We're not going to cart the keyboard out. <laughs> They're outside. You're not going to? No. Neither are you. Well, neither are I. I kind of knew that. Uh, so we'll have it right here. Go to breakfast and have our regular Easter Okay. Okay. So if anybody wants to donate anything, let me know. Let me know what you want, Deb, and I'll pick stuff up. I'll help you cook, too, if you need it. Okay. You don't have to say that twice. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Any, anything else? i got enough to say. That's all I have to say. Done? Okay. Here, our call to worship is Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 19 through 29, which are on pages 956, 957, and 890. That doesn't make sense. Oh. I don't know. Oh, that was a right, so, yeah, it might be. So page 956 and 957. Let's go with that first. Let's see what that works. Yeah, that might be. <coughs> Psalm 119. Yeah. Page 956 and 957. Yes, it's Psalm 118. Yeah, Psalm 118, sorry. Okay. Let's read this together, verses 1 and 2, and then 19 through 29. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. How about the house of sins? Yes, we did. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the village was rejected has become a capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Bless 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With vows in hand, join in the festival procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Our opening prayer, let's pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule over the human heart, not by force, but by the servant example of Jesus Christ. Move us by your spirit to join the joyful procession of those who confess Christ Jesus with their tongues and praise him with their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our next hymn is Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, number 278 in the hymnal. And before they do that, would you hand out those palms, please? I will. So you can throw them all in the aisle or watch them wave them around or whatever you want to do. Because this is the day that Jesus entered Jerusalem. I'd be careful then because they put up a good fight trying to separate them yesterday. They do and they really will stick Took me an hour. I didn't think I could be defeated by a time, but I think it was pretty close. So. Yeah, it's like having paper stuff. Yeah, it is. Our vicinity lost power, mm -hmm. and it was not 
It's not fun, but there are some good sides to this snow. It is pretty. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty, it's pretty in December. It's yeah, really yeah. Yeah. Not more practical for us. <laughs> than summer, than summer, right? Yeah, yeah. My, my dad always said snow in March was uh, very beneficial because it has nutrients in it that yeah. allow the ground to be fertile for spring. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he yeah. looked forward yeah. to snow. All right, we'll go with that. Yeah, poor man's fertilizer. But that's it, it's exactly. Just, it's just <laughs> We're an well extra fertilized. Fan of poor man's fertilizer. Yeah. <laughs> yes, because I think you know. I, as much as we didn't want snow, Carol sent me pictures of down in the Ravina, and they had like the icy. Ice. Oh, they yeah. looked like her driveway was a yeah. sheet of ice, yeah. and the roads were, and that's worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd rather oh, take yeah. a foot of snow yeah. than that. Yeah. So that was a blessing. Is this thing on? I don't think so. I don't know. I hear you just fine. Testing one, two. Yeah, it is. Is that Testing one, two. Oh, yeah, I guess that's yeah. Not yeah. Not you can hear me without a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Luke, any other praises? I don't have a praise, but I have another announcement that I forgot to say. Um, so I'm trying to figure out about doing this, like, women's whatever thing at my house, like a, and I, I didn't know whether we wanted to do it on a Friday evening or a Saturday morning, probably in May sometime. So if you'd let me know what your thoughts are, um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How about some concerns? I know we kind of want to Sue. Sue has one. That's yeah. mine as well, actually. Yes. Um, so um, my grandson, Colton's um, mom, Becky, her grandma passed away on Tuesday morning. Her stepbrother found her downstairs. And um, so she from what i gather she kind of i think lived a lot there with her so it was you know like hard and um so just pray for becky and um, the rest of her family and, and actually that's my stepson's chris's grandmother as well right so, right yeah so there's a connection there. yeah they didn't have any viewing anything she didn't want anything they just had a um they buried her on thursday morning and it was cold so Colton and I sat in the car, and while well, Becky went to the graveside, which was right in Perth. It's neat. I never realized there was a uh, cemetery there. Yeah. Well, I'd like you to continue praying for my daughter. She's really going through a, a dark time in her life, and um, with her husband in, in uh, the nursing home, that's just one part of her of the mess that she's in right now. So I just pray that, you know, ask you to pray that she can come up out of bed and find herself among, amongst all this. She will eventually. It's just, I don't think praying hurts. So, you know, surround her with prayer. We need to keep the prayers going for my sister Carol. I was able to talk to her. They operated on her on the 21st. And the news wasn't good as we wanted to hear. When they got into her lung to remove the cancer, they found a lot of lymph nodes that were good. So they removed a bunch of them and they took the top half of her lung out. And now they're waiting, uh, she's in the intensive care unit still, but they're waiting for the lab results to come back to see if they got all the cancer or if they have to do the chemotherapy and radiation. They're not sure on that yet. So she's looking at a hard, Long road. She was pretty beat when I was talking to her yesterday. She was quite bad. She'd had enough. And I said, whatever you do, don't give up. God's with you and she knows it. So we'll just keep lifting her up in our prayers if we could. Yes. Yeah. Marty, you want to talk about the benefits this afternoon? Oh, yeah. This afternoon is a benefit up at Logan's. It's a spaghetti dinner. And um, it's for the kids that now their mother quote unquote, Cindy Whitman passed away. She used to work at the bakery in the Charlie John's. And the oldest girl, well, as Crystal said, I love her. I used to pick her up and take her to Frosty's, and I do love her. And she is working to try to keep all the kids together, which is kind of a challenge. As Crystal knows, that's quite a challenge. And they're having a benefit tonight from five to seven at Logos. <coughs> Spaghetti dinner and the whole bit. How old are they, Marty? 
Huh? How old are they? Well, she's in her 20s. Yes. Yeah. And the younger ones, so they go down, they kind of step down. I had a couple of them in after school, which would have been uh, K through three. Those are her and nieces I take them and nephews. Yeah. Those are actually her nieces. Oh, yeah. And nephews, yeah. Or, yeah. And she's taking care of all of them? All these kids? How, how, how many? Pretty much, because that's what Cindy had. And, uh, how many? Are I don't know where the mother is. I don't know where the mother for some of them are. I, I just no. don't know. I have no idea. There are. The there children. are. So there's a need there. So yeah, there is. Can't go. There maybe, is. Maybe you can donate somehow or whatever. And, uh, anyway, it's there. Uh, Julia. Uh, I went and visited Anne, and she's doing pretty good, but she still can't hear good, and she just don't seem to get her strength back. Uh, she's she's in good spirits. So for she is. Yeah. She actually called me. Oh, oh great. Yeah, yeah. She called me. And she could hear most of what I said. She just a few times said, "Speak up." But I was really surprised to hear her voice. Uh -huh. I did not come down this week because I was dealing with a few scuffles and I didn't want to pass the wealth around, yeah. especially to those two ladies. And, uh, so, yeah. I went uh, over to Elsie's. Her daughter had a seizure, oh. and uh, come to find out that it was something she was eating. Oh, wow. So was, uh, what did she say? But Elsie's was eating today. Elsie's she daughter she said it was too cold oh. to get out. Oh, yeah. What was the seizure, though? It was from something she was eating. It's in, from an allergy. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's um, weird. No, that happened. I guess she's got oh, okay. sugar, too. Ah. So yeah, people exactly. lift it up in prayer. We never know if that's the uh, total name. Elsie wanted uh, Linda on the prayer list. So keep my father-in-law lifted up. He's struggling with situations, going older, can't drive anymore, and still being the stubborn old man that he is. <laughs> and Bonnie is in charge of taking care of him. I, yeah, I, haven't, seen her since, I haven't seen Bonnie since last Sunday because yeah, she's down there. And, didn't come up yesterday like she normally would because of the snowstorm. So, so maybe I'll see her next time. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> so, but uh, it's tough on them right now. Mm -hmm. So normally Bonnie has the help from her two other sisters. Cindy was staying with with uh, Joe for a while, but she went. I had to go back to Florida for a while because that's where she really lives. Mm -hmm. And then her other sister, Chrissy works five days a week, so she would normally come on the weekend. Well, she was out of town this weekend, so, so that's her partner. We do what we have to do. Anything else? People who keep in mind the remnants, we're outreaching to uh, Nathan Latour nursing home this afternoon. So we'll be there at 2.30, waiting for the folks there. So Gary's going to be there in spite of his pain that he's dealing with. And by the way, he shoveled this morning with his pain and everything. So. Otherwise, you would have had a three-foot snowbank to walk through to get in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Awful. And I'm pretty certain that the plowing was done by Tim. Is well, Gary's, Gary's uh, four-wheeler is buried up on top of the mountain, so yeah. he's not able to <laughs> Clear of this morning. So. God played it quick when I was. <laughs> All right. Any any other thoughts, uh, praises, or prayers? We'll go to the Lord in general and not. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we've been praying already as we uh, lifted up our loved ones and our concerns and our praises, and we thank you for those praises, Lord, because all good things come from you, and we give you all the praise and glory. We pray for all the concerns that we lifted here today, especially for all those loved ones, those closest to us, those in our thoughts, in our minds, on our hearts. We also lift up what we've been looking up normally, the constant concern of the situation in our world, in our country, in our towns, in our churches. even in our schools and some of our own homes. Lord, we lift up those concerns to you. 
we know you know what they all are. We have no idea how you handle all this to make it come out good for those that love you, but we know you do. So we leave it at your feet, in your hands, because our hands aren't capable. And yet you've left us here on this earth to help carry on your work. So, Lord, we ask you to uh, be with our loved ones and our concerns, and be with us too as we attempt to do what you would like us to do. We pray for those of us especially closest to us, and we pray for ourselves. We pray for those silent concerns here in the sanctuary. Lord, hear our prayers. We know you do. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. And now as we know, we will pray that prayer that Jesus left us to pray. <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the glory, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite the ushers to come forward. It's our turn to do uh, to wipe our tears away. Even now the throngs to welcome him prepare. Join all and sing his name declare. Let every voice resound with acclamation. Hosanna, praise to the Lord. Bless him who cometh to bring us salvation. Amen. And I just suggested to Mary that she play it not require us all to sing that song because it's very difficult to sing. Yeah. Well, when we did it with the uh, choir, I said to it's Crystal, so I put it down a third because it wanted to an F. And I yeah. thought, you've got to be kidding. No. Yeah, this is just way past us. Yeah. So remember what's happening. Yeah, this is, I put it down a third. <laughs> Yeah. 
had three verses, and that's what you see in pictures, and they're going like nuts. But it works. And Jesus rode in on that colt. Yeah, that's the colt. He rode in on the colt, they threw the pounds down, they waved them. And oh, they, yes. And they, they threw did. the colts down, too, and the yep. muddy rope. Sure well, let's did. turn to, uh, to Numbers 362 in our hymnal. But there's only one thing that can wash away our sin. Jerusalem. The crowd cheered. 
things, the next day things started changing. Jesus would soon go into the temple, overturn tables because he found he found the money changers in there doing things that he felt were right. We talked about uh, righteous anger. We ignore. We talked about it in the sermon. Uh, so last week or the week before, I forget. It all runs together in my mind. But righteous anger is what Jesus showed when he overturned the tables. Or said it didn't sit well. And others planned to kill him because of all the things he was doing. So I, I, uh, I'm not prepared to give you the whole sermon <laughs> sitting here. But uh, basically, that's the story. So we went there, and then uh, later he went to, went to stay with, uh, with his friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Well, uh, he was prepared to bury him uh, to make his last turn and would take him to the cross eventually. So think about that. He already knew what was going to happen. He came into town knowing that, that was his destiny. He shared with him. And he sat down at the, at the table on Thursday evening, what we call Monday Thursday. We were going to do that this year, but we will save that for another year. So that was disciples, even the one that would betray him. And he uh, broke the bread and he drank the wine and said, Do this in remembrance of me. And from there, he went out, prayed in the garden. Great that the cup would be taken from him. But God had willed it to be done that way. So, so he, he submitted to the will of his Father. And that's what we're all here to do submit to the will of our Father, because he's our Father too. Jesus is our brother. Jesus' duty was to go to the cross and forgive us of our sins. Our duty is to carry on now that he's gone. He's up there, we're down here. We don't have the power that Jesus has, but yet we have more than we realize if we believe in him because scripture tells us that. So let me get back to uh, see if there's anything like a little bit. It does may well for the palm branches. I want you to turn your Bibles now as we read the, the scripture that goes along. This is in Matthew 11, excuse me, Mark 11, 1572, 1573. Mark 11, verses 1 through 11. 1572, it starts. So, the whole one as I read a little bit of summary of what Palm Sunday meant, what happened back then. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. I'm tired. Look at here. If anyone asks, Why are you doing this? The Lord say, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied it at the doorway or tied at the doorway, and they untied it. Some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? And they answered, as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their, their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread the palm branches, spread branches, they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. We'll talk about more about what happened on Friday that week at our Good Friday service that we're going to have on this Friday. And then we'll fill in the blanks there 
what leads up to Easter. And we'll rejoice at Easter. Let's take a look now at what happened that Holy Week between Palm Sunday and Good Friday. Monday was the day that you often heard of. He went to the temple, as I shared with you, and cleared it. On the morning after his triumphal tri tri entry, Jesus returned with his disciples to Jerusalem and won them. Along the way, he cursed a pig tree because it had failed to bear, bear fruit. Do you remember that story? I read an article written by Mary Fairchild that was posted in LearnReligions.com about the Holy Week, and I'm quoting this little from it as follows. Some scholars believe that the cursing of the fig tree represented God's judgment on the spiritually dead religious leaders of Israel. Others believe the symbolism extended to all believers demonstrated that genuine faith is more than just outward religio religious religiosity. True living faith must bear spiritual fruit in a person's life. He cursed the fig tree because there was no fruit of it. It relates to us bearing no fruit. When Jesus arrived at the temple, he found the courts full of corrupt money changers. He began overturning their tables and clearing the temple, saying, The scriptures declare my temple will be a house of prayer. But you have turned it into a den of thieves. And that's from Luke 19.46. On Monday evening, Jesus stayed in Bethany again, probably in the home, as I mentioned, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. If you'd like to read more about that, you can find it in, in all four Gospels. Matthew 21, Mark 11, Luke 19, and John 2. On the Tuesday of the Holy Week, Jesus and his disciples returned to Jerusalem. They passed the withered fig tree. And that's when Jesus talk, talked about the faith. Told them about the faith. Back at the temple while that was happening, religious leaders were upset at Jesus' establishing himself as a spiritual authority. They thought they had all the answers. <coughs> they organized an ambush with the intent to place him under arrest. But Jesus evaded their traps and pronounced harsh judgment on them, saying, Blind guides, you remember that? He called them blind guides. For you are like whitewashed tombs. Whitewashed tombs. Beautiful on the outside, but filled on the inside with dead people's bones and all sorts of impurity. Outwardly, you look like religious people, but inwardly, your hearts are filled with hypocrisy and laws, snakes, sons of vipers. How will you escape the judgment of hell? He said that. That's that's uh, repeated from uh, Brian Matthew's Gospel, chapter 23, verses 24 through 20, 33. Well, later, still on that afternoon on Tuesday, Jesus left the city and went with his disciples to the Mount of Olives, and he sits east of the temple and overlooks Jerusalem. That's where that one of ours is. Here Jesus gave what's known as the Olivet Discourse, which was a prophecy of the destruction of Jerusalem, end of the age. And he speaks, as usual, in parables, using symbolic language about the end times, including the second coming and the final judgment. Scripture indicates that this Tuesday was also the day Jewish Iscariot negotiated with the Sanhedrin. That was the rabbinical court of the ancient Israel. He negotiated on that day to betray Jesus for money. You find that in Matthew 26, 14 through 16. Well, that evening, Jesus and his disciples returned to Bethany to stay the night. Scriptures supporting Tuesday's events are, again, in all the Gospels. If you want the numbers, I can give them to you. But that brings us to Wednesday, and that's known as Holy Wednesday. Not much is known about that. The Bible doesn't say what the Lord did on Wednesday, compassionately. It is speculated that after two exhausting 
days in Jerusalem, Jesus and his disciples spent the day resting in Bethany in anticipation of the Passover. Passover is coming, the annual mount where everybody went to Jerusalem, the, the good Jews. Just short, t just a short time previously, Jesus had revealed to his disciples and the world that he had power over death by raising Lazarus from the grave. Remember that? After seeing this incredible miracle, many people in Bethany believed that Jesus was the Son of God and put their faith in him. You may also remember that in Bethany, just a few nights earlier, Lazarus' sister had lovingly anointed, anointed Jesus' feet with that expensive perfume. I know you know that story. And Judas was upset with that because he was. He thought it should be sold for money. Wasted on Jesus' feet, as he's called it. He thought it should be sold because he had his fingers in the till. He was the treasurer. Now we are at what's called Maundy Thursday, the day of the Passover and the infamous, infamous Last Supper. From Bethany, Jesus sent Peter and John ahead to the upper room in Jerusalem to make preparations for the Passover feast. That evening at sunset, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples as they prepared to share the Passover. Even the feet of Jesus, Judas that he knew would betray him. By performing this humble act of service, Jesus demonstrated by example how us believers are to love one another. Then Jesus shared the, the feast of the Passover with the disciples, saying, I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Luke 12, 15 and 16. As the Lamb of God, Jesus was about to fulfill the meaning of the Passover by giving his body to be broken and his blood, blood to be shed in sacrifice, freeing us from sin. That's what he did. Freeing us from sin and death. During this last supper, Jesus established the Lord's Supper community. That's where it comes from. We remember that at least once a month. Instructing his followers to continue remembering his sacrifice by sharing the elements of bread and wine. When you eat this bread and drink this wine, do it in remembrance of me. Remember? Do we do that? Yes, we do. Well, later, Jesus and the disciples left the upper room and went to the garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus prayed in agony to God the Father. Luke's gospel shows that his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. Hard to envision that. I mean, I prayed pretty hard to think, but I've never prayed that hard. He had tough times ahead. He knew it. He knew the pain and suffering. But he knew that was what he was intended to do. This he knew what God had sent him here for. Him. Later that evening in Gethsemane, Jesus was betrayed with a kiss by a Jewish Iscariot and arrested by the Sanhedrin. He was taken to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the whole council had gathered to begin making their case against Jesus. You remember the story that ensued in the early morning hours after Jesus, as Jesus' trial was getting underway. Peter denied knowing the Master three times, and the rooster crowed. Peter, his good friend, denied him. All these events are recorded in the four scriptures, like the others. I want to share you just a brief part of the scripture from Mark 14, verses 10 and 11. And I'm not going to ask you to turn to it, but it's in the Bible, 1579, in our Pew Bible. But it's very short, so just listen. Then Joseph Cariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests 
to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for the opportunity to hand them over. I wrote about this extensively in my disciplines ran grammars and read them from yesterday. Because I really had that talk. One of Jesus' close friends and one of his twelve handpicked disciples betrayed him for money. Thirty pieces of silver to be exact, the scripture tells us. Betrayed him for money. We uh, don't know exactly what Jesus was thinking there. I have first-hand knowledge now, but I've experienced the betrayal of so-called friends that I consider best friends. How about you? Some of you may have had that same experience. Yeah. It's tough. It's hard to forgive. And then even if you do forgive, you don't forget such things. Jesus was betrayed by a very close friend. He was betrayed even by Peter when he denied him. Jesus was human just like us. He had the same feelings we have when we're betraying somebody who does something bad to us, especially when they're a good friend. Comes like a night. We're all born into original sin and have that capability to betray, let's face it. What a horrible thought, but very real, that we, can, we should take time to think about. We all have reasons for everything we do. Those reasons seem appropriate at the time we make those decisions. Judas Iscariot, for Judas Iscariot, the reason was money. He was a thief at heart, and always was looking for more to acquire and steal. Like I said, he had his fingers in the till when he was treasure. We're never really told what he did with his confiscated, with all those funds he confiscated from the till. But we are told he surely had regrets for betraying Jesus because what happened? He went out and committed suicide. And 30 pieces of silver is what's known as the price of the offer's bill. That's where he's, he was buried or whatever. He knew he'd done wrong. Was he forgiven by Jesus? God God really told them that Jesus on the cross had forgiven Father for they know not what to do. This time, however, we do later, later learn that it drove him to take his life and hindsight is always 2020. For us as well. We know about Jesus' reasons and regrets, but what about ours? As I said, many of us may have been betrayed as well. And those who those who betrayals hurt us greatly. What about us? What have we done? Our, have we done our own dirty deeds for whatever reason? Or maybe without re even realizing it. Sometimes we do things to hurt others deeply, but, and we don't realize what we're doing. It leaves me wondering as I look back at my own life and the decisions and the countless mistakes I've made during the many years that I walked on this, this earth. What have I done to hurt others and what have I done without realizing? Makes me take a deeper look at Palm Sunday. Jesus rode into Jerusalem to the cheering and waving the palms. They welcomed him with honor and joy. They all were thrilled to see him. That's the way we start out when we meet, meet new people and bonding with them. With great joy and hope and anticipation for the future. Do you regret what I'm about to say? Do you, I mean, do you get what I'm about to say? The comparison I'm about, about to make here. Jesus called the 12 disciples to be his commandments and close, co companions and closest friends. One of them and, and ended up betraying him and wounded him deeply. Jesus rode into Jerusalem and was received with the cheering crowd of great honor, only soon to be met with Christ crucified that same joyous crowd turning into an angry crowd to betray him. We enter into friendship and sometimes even a closer bond 
that may have to be sorrow. Life is an easy isn't it? Broken pieces, broken hearts. We're all faced with those at some time or other through life. Let's take the same analogy to our current break from the United Methodist Church since we're still involved with that. And it will go on. The births will go on without forever. Probably about well, many, many years at this. In our lifetime, probably grow. Do they feel betrayed by us because we left the church, the United Methodist Church? Do we feel betrayed by them because the church left us? I think the answer is probably yes to both of those questions. We all have our reasons. What's the truth? Do you remember that from what Pontius Pilate said when he had Jesus on trial? What's the truth, retorted Pilate. With this he went out again to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis to charge him. That's from John 28. That's when Jesus was on trial and, and, and Pilate was knowing that they were here. There was no truth in the charges of the women against Jesus. What is the truth? They had their reasons. We all struggle with the question, and sometimes, and, or something similar. What is right? What is truth? What should I do? We struggle. We all make decisions. And yes, I guess we all do betray and disappoint at times. Thank God we can learn a piece of truth and reality from what Judas did to Jesus. Thank, thank God for Jesus. He gives us a way to be forgiven from all the mistakes and even betrayals we have made and, and may have made without one. Betrayals cut deeply and hurt long after when they happen to us. What about others? What have we done to others? Let's pray. Lord have mercy. Jesus, hear our prayer. For those who have betrayed us and for those that we may have, be, have betrayed. Last but not least, we ask forgiveness for all the times we pray we pray to the Lord. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Let's turn in our hymn to 159. Then by the cross.
Jesus is gone, he's up there. Yes, we betrayed him, we betrayed others. But he forgives, he forgave us, he continues to forgive us for things that we do knowingly and things that we do unknowingly. So let's go to that benediction now, my friends. Go forth to the week of transformation. We'll meet you and guide you. Do not hide when they recognize you. Do not doubt when, when you see Christ. Do not deny when you are confronted. Do not stop until you are at the cross. And there you will see the light. And the burdens of your heart will roll away. Until then, God be with you. Have a great day and a great week. And then tie the cross for Jesus. It's ours to carry on. God bless. As well, I'm saved. You gotta love that snow, it'll be gone somehow. One could only hope. Hi! Yeah.